Good afternoon, professors. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, my research project, which is called The Effects of Extracurricular Materials on EFL Chilean Students' Grades. Yeah. So, Martin, why did you pick this topic? Well, first of all, I found a problem inside the classroom, which is that uh, the textbook is the only um, teaching material inside the classroom, which I, I'm not against uh, having a textbook inside the classroom, but as the only teaching material, it would be a problem. Because in this case, there were some students that didn't have the textbook. So they were like aside from the from the class. They couldn't progress because they couldn't follow the activities. Now, so from this problem, I made a question: uh, What are the effects that the use of extracurricular material may have on, on a group of 11th grade Chilean EFL learners' grades? So extracurricular material means that every single kind of material that is not the book. So I tried to include some new materials in order to fulfill the need for the students that don't have the book or for others who want to learn in another who want to learn sorry in another way. Right? So in my case, my focus is the grades. Right? So my my objective of course it is um, uh, to evince the effects, if any of course that my materials would, would have in, in the stu my students' grades. Uh, my specific objective is to compare the, these results uh, to another group of students because I'm going to make a group, a control group, right? And the other one is to discover the possible other factors uh, besides of the use of the extra regular materials which may have a link with the students' performance. Performance. So my assumption is, um, if I'm going to get a new material, I expect to uh, I expect them to improve their grades. So that's my prior uh, assumption. I'm going to do this because I want to improve their grades. So what does the theory say? Okay. Um, first, we have to. Uh, mentioned this pretty common top, uh, theory that is social constructivism and um, basically says that we learn things uh, having interaction with other people. In this case, uh, we have Vygotsky with TPD, Social Proximal Development, and it says that we have a, if we want to learn something, we have a gap, a gap. So we need someone in order to close that gap, to close that gap in order to achieve or reach that knowledge. So for this study, social constructivism is the construction of knowledge based on social activities through scaffolding. Meaningful learning, also this was seen in, in linguistics and basically it's the theory based on meaningful learning. Something that is useful for me, I'm going to keep it and I'm going to remember for my entire life now, but uh, long term memory. Okay? And things that are not useful for me, I'm going to forget it, forget them, and uh, they would be and in the cognitive trash can. So I'm going to forget them. Right? So meaningful learning is the constant relation between the new contents and the previous one that I deal with through time because they are fused and fortified by relevant social interactions. Right? So motivation, this is very important. Because there are two kinds of motivation, the extrinsic motivation and the extrinsic motivation. And basically, the extrinsic, the extrinsic is the one that I learn things because I like to learn those things. Things are there. They, I learn English because it pleases me. Right? But on the other hand, we have the extrinsic motivation, which are the grades, which is pretty important in this study. So I learn in, I'm learning English because I want to get better grades. Right? So it is important to know also uh, designing material, how to design materials. How our mayor uh, all expressed uh, 10 guidelines in order to get a good material, in order to design a good material. And Tom Nilsson also says that not only we have to, to uh, design materials, we have also to uh, 
evaluate them after we use them because sometimes they may fail, something can happen. Right? So, for this study, designing material refers to meet the needs of the students considering resources, teaching competence, uh, restriction of copyright, or also the possible evaluation of materials after using them. So, designing effective materials, we have to take into account many uh, factors. Context, promote interaction, on development, integration of the skills, friendliness, flexibility, uh, adaptability, and considering learning styles. So, Mark, how are you going to do this? Uh, first, we have to give a certain shape to my uh, study. Uh, my study is mixed because I, I care about my students. In this case, I have a close relationship with participants, which is pretty qualitative. And I don't manage all the variables. So, uh, that's not quantitative because quantitative uh, studies uh, are you have the, the manage of all variables, in this case I don't. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also quantitative because I, I care about grades. That's my data. I am going to express my data through grades, statistical results, etc. So, my paradigm. Uh, I would like to explain this uh, before, sorry, after the, the presentation because it's going to take time. And tuck, tuck, tuck. So, uh, this is positive and interpretive. I'm going to explain the error. So, wh what's my support of this uh, uh, shows? Uh, uh, Rocco says that uh, there are certain kind of uh, types of mixed study, and mine is the type three: exploratory, quantitative data, and statistical analysis. I can explain you afterwards if you want to, I don't have problems, but basically my study is the type of number three. Yeah, so my design is action research because I want to do something inside the, the, the environment. I want to have an impact in the environment, so I want to involve, empower and improve aspects of participants, social work. So this is my um, this is my procedure. This is taken from Elliot and Action Research for the Education of Change. And this, is, this chart shows how would be a, a, a good um, procedure of, a, of an action research. So first we have observe, reflect, plan and act. In my case, in the observational stage, I was watching the students who are not paying attention, who are not part of the class, and then I reflected that I need to do something about it, so I'm going to plan something. Plan something. Uh, I'm going to design materials, new things, uh, alternative materials, online materials, I don't know, new things. And then I'm going to act, in this case, apply those materials and, and know what, what happens then. What were my results? What happened? I, I don't know, maybe I failed, maybe something happened. So I'm going to, I need to reflect again, and again, and again, right? So those are the participants. Basically, uh, they are 34 students, and I split the class into 17 students per group. So they were separated, right? Um, and they were chosen random, because if I pick only the students who were not facing the, the, the book, uh, results were would be like quite different. So my materials was a pre-test uh, to the whole class and uh, evaluation material only for those who are in my my group and then a post-test. I'm going to explain or give the, the details of this if you want to I have them. And uh, propose analysis techniques, the t-test. So basically the t-test uh, is a, a statistical and quantitative way of analyzing uh, studies and um, basically is to compare two different uh, groups and, and see the differences between them, right? So, trustworthiness, well, credibility, of course data is uh, measurable, is, can, it, it can be um, 
validated by another teacher if it is necessary uh, can, they can see what's the, what were the results so transferability means that in any context in which the students are not part of the class because of the books, because of some, some materials that they need they can use this uh, kind of new materials so my expected outcome, well, better grades, of course, for, for my students. And uh, of course, I would give this information to the school in order to have alternative teaching materials for a student who can afford the textbook. Um, but uh, it could be that the institution would not accept my alternative teaching materials because uh, it is not uh, it is not profitable. I don't know if that's, that's a word, but you can. They, they have to invest a lot of money in that, so they have to to pay someone to design the materials, to to get new books and things that they wouldn't accept because it's their money. So also um, they have an agreement with some uh, companies uh, that create teaching materials. So uh, that would be like the bad side, the backward, the, sorry, the, the drawback of this study. So those are the references, if you want to see them. That's it.